Welcome back to Mixing Machines. Today's episode, we're getting back on my Cougar, even though it's been about almost two years since I touched it. Because I got the panel and I was like, oh, I'll do a quick little deal with that. And that turned into a year and a half. A little more. So, finally getting back to my Cougar. So we're finishing up the other side. Last time we did that corner over here. So we're going to be finishing up this corner, getting this all done up and nice, and then moving on to, I'll show you here, so I'll show you, so you got the corner that rusted out here, typical deal on Cougars and Mustangs, the back corners here rust out, so we already repaired that side. As you can see, my spray paint's getting a little rusty again. It happens to him sitting on the weather for a year. And then I'm also going to take wire wheel to clean up all the way up here. You see, I had to replace it all the way up here on this side because I see where you got a pinhole there. Make sure it's just give you a pinhole and not a whole section I got to replace. So I got my wire wheel. I'm going to clean it all up again. Get it all fresh. And I got my teepee set up, but it's not raining today. It's got a little break. And I tried working on it the other day when it was raining, but had terrible wind at the same time. So that's why you can see it's a little broken over there and totally falling apart now. Other than that, let's get to it. All right, so go climb up again. So you see we got to replace this slight inner edge corner here. Then we got to replace all the inside and up to here. There's not enough up here's any in and out. Then you got to replace this up to here and this down here. So not a whole lot got to replace in this corner. It wasn't as bad as that side. But you can see we got a few holes here, a little pin hole here, a little hole here, and a little one here, which isn't too bad. We'll just fill it up with some weld and then grind it all smooth and flat again and that'll be good as new. Same with this one here, fill it with some weld. And of course a little pin hole there. First, we got to make our new panels for this. So, you got to make a piece that goes there and another piece that for the bottom there. So, I'm going to get my templates made. Get all my pieces made, and I'll be back once I'm ready to show you all that. Alright, so we gotta cut all the bad number real quick. So 
that I'll cut out, clean up all the way around so I can have a nice clean welds. We weld nice cleanly. Then I got out this whole entire intersection here cut out. Because it's none of this. So I got my little bottom piece here that's still kind of there. Now you can see it's a little Swiss cheese, but I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to throw some uh, uh, tack primer on it. Or what's it called? Weld through primer on this piece here. Well, I'm going to throw it all on all of it. I'm going to make my bottom piece that goes from here down over here. I'm going to make the middle piece that goes here to over here. And then my top little patch that goes right up here. And you can see I overcut a little bit, but that's fine. It's not too bad. I could weld that up and blend it in and it'll look like nothing ever happened. For the most part. When it's driving by at 60, you'll never know. So I always like to make my hole before I make my patches because once I have my hole size exactly what it is, I can then make my patch a little bit bigger and I can slowly sand off the sides or grind or whatever you need to do to slowly trim a little bit off so they fit perfectly in. So you know, I can make my patches first and then set them in, but if I made my hole a little bit bigger or something's not exactly straight like my cut here you know that's you're kind of sol and you got to make a new one so i always make my hole first and then i make my patch and now i'm all ready to make the patch so curved here all flat down there and just be a flat piece that'll bend into there and this will be an l piece that i'll fit in there So I'm going to make my pieces for it, and then I'm going to show them to you once I get them all done. Alrighty, so I did some self-etching primer on it for over the night, the next day. I don't know how well you can hear me over the rain, so, so I got my patch made, if that one fits there. This one fits in the bottom there. This one here, and it goes in there, but I have to bend this one a little more out once I'm actually tacking it in so it actually gets to the shape I need it to be. Because right now, trying to bend it out while it's not in there is a little difficult. Oh, well, that's gone forever. Oh, yeah. So I got that all set up and ready. I got out the welder to weld it all up, but my display's not showing up from the welder. So, unfortunately, I can't use it right now because I don't know what it's set at. The last time it was used was my brother welded on his truck. He's doing his bed all been put together. I don't know if he was doing some thicker stuff or not, but I could try, but this is a real thin material. I don't want to just blow through it. Now I can check out the rest of my tent. It's working out for the most part. It's gonna get some tape and tape up the edges. But other than the floor, now yeah, it's staying pretty dry on and over here where it's cooling up. I'm dripping on this corner here. It's just has to be pulled out. Drain out of there. Pull across. So it's not pulling up like that anymore. Other than that, it's working out pretty well. So with that, pretty much at a stopping point. As far as the noise. Can't get stuff welded up right now. Hopefully I'll do it, probably finish it up in this video. But hopefully it's gonna be right on late. Because I gotta get the welder fixed.
always something. Oh, that. Yeah, see you in a bit. All right, so a little intermediate break from the, do work on the cougar here. My brother bought another suburban here. Very nice, lovely suburban. Yeah. Just brought it home my brother's trailer last weekend. We cleaned out spots to go bring it to the house, and now we got to give it a walk home using our forklift. So now we got to go walk it down a few Hasala streets, or a few doors down, and bring her home. And we're off. I still got that full footage from when we cruised the uh, the or my phone when we cruised the car uh, the Oh, yeah. I know it's one to Gotta figure out how uh, to get that off my phone. Okay. I already did. Okay. <laughs> Cause you didn't even press record. <laughs> right. Well, that's you know, that's all on you. I got worried there for a second because the screen went to uh, black, and I was yeah. like, uh, "But the red light was on." So I'm like, "Red light usually." Hey, see, just like that, that's how you walk your Chevy home. Back to the Cougar. Okay, so what I really forgot to do was show the hood open when I built it. So I got it fully open there, and the clearance, show you here. I'll show you there the clearance is about half inch away from the windshield wipers and the hood is all the way up and it's perfect so if you do at least a 
five inch rise, you should be good. Or five and a half inch rise. You should just have a perfect amount of clearance there. But unfortunately, when I moved it to bring home the Suburban, another Suburban, I was uh, stopped at a Vruma Vruma when I shouldn't have because it hasn't really learned itself yet. It backfired and I got an ejecto gasket here. So I'm going to replace the gasket with the Ambroic sealant. Hopefully that holds up a lot better than the gasket material I keep blowing out. Like this is an actual supercharger gasket there. But yeah. So with all that over, we can finally get back to the Cougar. As soon as I finish putting this back together, get it all sealed up and ready to go. So if it's not raining too bad, we're going to go to Cars and Coffee. That kind of echoes in here now. We're going to go out to Cars and Coffee with it. Oh yeah. So that's our little detour for now. Back to the Cougar. All right, so we're back at the Cougar, but as you can see, my uh, little Carbona TP thing here is uh, kind of dead. The wind blew it around enough to push it around and make it make the tarp part loose, and then it filled up with water and crushed it. So my Carbona's dead. It didn't work out too well. Trying to the damages of all it all. That roam around it. They there bend all the pipes. That part came apart. Just completely just folded it over. Alright, you see? Right here it's full of water right there and it just filled it up there and crushed the my little cabana. So it died. So I'm gonna have to push it all back up, try to bend out the bars the where they're somewhat bent straight out again and hopefully holds up a little bit longer for any for the rest of this winter and with that back to the work all right well we straighten out some of the pipes a little bit you see the thumb are still quite bent but it'll do for what i need it to do for now some are Never be the same. So, but not like it's storm or anything at the moment. Just needed to block the wind a little bit. I'll uh, get my corner welded up and finish this video. Well, let's do that. Let's get the welder out and get this dug. All right. So got my little pieces made out, got everything all set up and ready. All they're plugged in and everything, everything's working. I'm gonna start lining up my piece and I'm gonna start tacking everything in. Well, well, that's pretty much all I gotta do and this is a self etching primer so I can actually weld through the primer so I don't have to clean it all off again. Before I do that, I'm actually going to paint the bottoms of all this with the self etching primer to help it stay non rusty. I almost forgot to do that. Right, I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. So I'll be back in about 10, 20 minutes to get all set in there and weld it up. While I'm waiting for that, I got a bunch of grime and dirt and shit in there. I'm gonna grab the vacuum and vacuum out.
All right, so I got everything all fully welded up. See there. This over here got a little goober mess. The corner there. Same with this corner over here. It just started blowing itself out and wasn't very good metal to try and weld to. But got it filled up. So I'm just going to knock everything down. Use the grinder up. I missed a spot right there. So I'll do that. Uh, I got a little hole right there also. So patch those up real quick. I'm going to hit everything down with the grinder. Look for anything else I got to do. Got a little spot there. And then, yeah. All right, so I got it all clean up. Just gotta throw some paint on it, make it look nice. Little bondo, you can never tell it was even a hole there. All right, going to sew. And that finishes up my windows. Next, I gotta do quarter panels, which this side actually doesn't look too bad at all. Uh, they're knocking this out. Main part, though. Get this back one here fixed. Big hole here. We're all done up here. So get that one fixed. We get this all fixed up. On this side. And all right here too. I'll be next video is doing the corner panels getting those all fixed up so I'm gonna throw some paint on this real quick and show you again once it's all painted all right so got it all painted up you see it actually looks pretty good it's not absolute 100% perfect but a little bondo and paint you'll never know this corner was completely rotted out or the other corner but with that thank you for watching
And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed doing the So weird old. It looks so weird. Why are you like so fish lensed? What? And with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. As always, be so kind to like, comment, subscribe. Until the next one, thank you for watching.